I'll start by saying that it's really difficult to sum up a senior project in just six minutes. So I'll do the best I can and offer you the opportunity to speak with me later and ask me questions or let me know your thoughts. I will also add that my senior project guided me into territory that is really difficult to talk about. I looked at sensitive issues that really challenged me as I tried to confront them. So I'll give you the best description that I can. Um, and as a matter of fact, one of my methods for my research design was to maintain a sense of humor and lightheartedness, which allowed me to remember why I love COA um, and why I wanted to do this project. So my project began as a response to the college's five-year strategic design that features an objective to increase enrollment as a method to increase revenue. This makes logical sense to look at the, one, the, the main source of net gain um, to increase that. But I was not the only person who was piqued by this objective. There was an entire open meeting last fall with COI students, staff, faculty, and alumni with the trustees as our audience that focused entirely on this issue. For the most part, the overall sentiment was the overall sentiment from that meeting was that growth contradicts our educational approach, human ecology, which works best with a small community. My academic advisor, Bonnie Tai, and I had been throwing around the idea of COA becoming a work college for a while. It would be something similar to Berea, Warren Wilson, or Sterling Colleges, if anyone knows who that, what those colleges are to provide context. Um, we both felt that financially and educationally it made sense for COA to be a work college. For, to name a few reasons, we felt that student work could offset institutional costs. It positively affects student development in terms of maturity and ownership of the college's resources and best of all, could allow us to remain small and not risk compromising our unique pedagogy. Once again, human ecology. So I wrote my senior project proposal at the beginning of winter term, and it clearly outlined my objectives and the steps I needed to take to get to provide a guide for COA to work towards a, a work college transformation. My research design included historical research of COA to, found out, to find out how we got to where we are now, um, financial research into how the college operates, comparative case studies, mostly of which were work colleges, empirical research to look at trends in higher education and how work affects college students, and interviews with community members, both past and present. In fact, it was during my first interview with a community member that my proposal was turned on its head. I decided to go back to the start, so I had a meeting with the college's first president, Ed Kelber. I went to him with enthusiasm and confidence I uh, brought my proposal with me and showed it to him. And we had a great conversation, and then I left feeling inspired, but mostly I was annoyed. <laughs> Ed made me confront a set of latent goals of which I had decided to keep latent. <laughs> he indicated that my project featured nothing of my personal opinions, and then asked me, really, Scout, why are you doing this project? I stumbled over my words as I tried to respond and revealed that my intent was more personal than I cared to share. Ed taught me about a facet of hemocology that I had yet to practice very well, and that is the individual. Human ecology is about looking at all perspectives, but not forgetting to look at ourselves. So after that, I did some reflection and reassessed my entire project. So thank you for that, Ed. I'm now still working on my project. <laughs> it became much less simple than I was hoping for it to be. So my project is based more on a love for CO is based more than just on a love for COA or a critique of what we do now and how we could do better. It's also aligned with my personal values. I'm the first in my family to go to college and graduate. I come from a place with limited economic resources, and COA, as my choice of college, has changed my life. And because it places, because it prioritizes students economically, um, financial aid is huge at COA. We offer 85% of students um, financial aid, which is unheard of, I think, at most colleges. Um, and also, we receive support academically with individual advising um, and a remarkable student life team. So I've been able to succeed because I went to COA. So I realized from all of this reflection that I cared so much about COA's financial methods because I feared that we would compromise access to eligible students who have limited economic resources, as well as cultural capital to succeed in higher ed. COA's quality and value of education must continue to be great. I felt that with increased enrollment, the unique 
student experience may erode. For this reason, my project became an investigation into the status of education, not just at CUA, but in the United States. I looked for ways for CUA to be a leader in dealing with this issue because we say that we're life-changing, world-changing, and I think that this is a huge issue. I think I would say that college students now face, we, we no longer ask where do we want to go to college, but rather where can we afford to go to college. So after my meetings with folks like Ed um, and Ann Peach, the college's first employee, and Miller Doherty, the director of Billings and Grounds, and Ken Hill, who's a faculty and the academic dean, and Mary Harney, the college painter, this is just like a small handful of folks that I got to talk to. Um, also, any students who would listen to me. <laughs> my project that started off so clear became so diffused. So I'll offer you some findings about findings from my project that focus on what COA does now um, and how what we do causes us to be poised to deal, with the to deal with educational quality and accessibility in the United States and the world. Um, there are unique structures at COA that don't exist at most colleges that support dialogue and promote change. These include the all-college meeting, um, which works as a democratic platform to discuss and pass community-wide policies. The committees of the college governance system can provide funding for student groups, which helps develop a sense of mattering, and also work as an avenue to voice ideas and concerns. There's a few less tangible things in the structure at COA that I want to emphasize. I think this is part of our cultural appeal. Um, there's, few there's few bureaucratic barriers at COA. For example, I can march up to turrets and talk to the college president whenever I need to, pending they're not in a meeting or away. Um, I can call up previous college presidents and ask if they would be willing to hang out with me for a while so I can ask them questions. Uh, the trustees are visible and not just invested monetarily like at other schools. They're engaged and interested in student work. They offer friendship, real expertise. Um, we've had trustees teach classes before. Um, this is very unique. Also, students value the college and are invested in its future. As part of my research, I sent out an anonymous survey that had 68 respondents. Everyone in that survey indicated that they would be willing to work at least some amount to contribute to the college. More so, some students offered in that survey that they have a lot of free time which may be a bias because they had time to fill out the survey, but um, that they would be willing to contribute more time and energy to benefit COA. And then there's a couple areas of improvement that I see COA having potential for. I'd like to see more community-wide dialogue, thinking about, so thinking more about where we stand and who we are, because I think this is an important first step to inciting change. And I think that only sometimes we have these conversations, such as when the strategic design is on the docket or when we have an institutional self-study. Um, I'd like to see increased awareness of socioeconomic class issues um, in higher education, especially at a private college. This is a huge privilege. And I think a lot of folks, well, I know, so a lot of folks that I talk to, student staff and faculty, do not see economics, cla economic class as an issue at COA which simply indicates a need for more dialogue. So as I've conveyed, the intention to come up with a solid vision for the future of COA is very ambitious, and I've not yet found the perfect or critical path, so to speak, but I'm close. And so essentially, what I have to offer is my research as the material product. So my research is formatted as a catalog of resources and an explanation of my process. Ultimately, my project became my process, and although I have many findings, I needed to satisfy, satisfy the requirement and graduate. Um, and I was doing this project in lieu of other obligations, so I'm excited to get some space from it <laughs> and reflect on it. Um, and the information I concluded in my project serves as a platform or springboard for people at COA to consider how the college ought to progress and nurture its radical mission and human ecological approach. I include descriptions of each of my goals. I emphasize my opinions and process for justifying each of them as pertinent goals for COA. So I'll end with a quote. When your views on the world and your intellect are being challenged and you begin to feel uncomfortable because of a contradiction you've detected that is threatening your current model of the world, pay attention. You're about to learn something. So this is from a previous faculty member at COA, Bill Drury, and this is fr that was from his human ecology essay. And I relate to that quote because my project made me really uncomfortable. It challenged me intellectually, intellectually and threatened my worldview, for sure. 
And I think I can say that the purpose of my project is to ask all COA community members to pay attention and consider ourselves while we consider the world as we consider human ecology and the future of COA. And yeah, that's all I have. <laughs>